Hello, and thank you for tuning in to a spring Trip Hex DC live stream here on the National Mall. If you're new around here, hello, my name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and founder of Trip Hex DC, and I just wrapped up a tour. Just gave a great tour to a wonderful family here on the National Mall, and now it's time for a live stream. Today is April 14th, 2024, a little bit afternoon. The weather is perfect. It is one of these almost perfect rare spring days that if you're here in DC you got to get outside and you got to come enjoy because these are a real treat especially after some of the weather we have been having so far this year so if you're joining me here live go ahead and say hello in the chat and if you're watching on the replay go ahead and let me know uh, if you've been to DC in the spring and what you liked the most what you enjoyed and I will begin my walk around so let me go ahead and flip the camera. You can see what a perfect spring day it is here on the National Mall. Today is also the last day, the final day of the National Cherry Blossom Festival. So it always starts on March 20th, the first day of spring. And this year it wraps up today on April 14th. So it usually is about three, three and a half weeks long. This year it was about three and a half. And I will talk a little bit more about this year's bloom, peak bloom. We are past peak bloom, but as you may have seen from the thumbnail, the Kwanzins are still in bloom. They're a little bit past peak, but the Kwanzins are still in bloom. And I'm gonna try to take you over to see some of the Kwanzins so that you can get a look at what they look like. They are very different from the Yoshinos, but they look quite spectacular anyway, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and do a walk along the reflecting pool today. A classic walk. And thank you for everyone who's already in the chat. Robin says, I'm moving to DC next week. Yay, excellent, happy to hear it. And Kanisha, good to see you. Kanisha says, hope everyone is having a wonderful Sunday. Well, I do too. I hope everyone is having as good a day where you are as it is here and Daniel says happy Sunday happy to sun happy Sunday to you as well Daniel and yes congratulations to Robin on the move to DC it's always exciting a little scary and a little exciting to move to a new place and I did see a before I started the live I did see a chat from Joe who said it was the worst April Fool's Day this year because I did not publish a podcast episode. And Joe is not wrong. I did miss a podcast episode on April 1st, and that was a joke. It was just the unfortunate reality that I ran out of time. Uh, spring break really got away from me this year. Spring break is always busy. It's actually the single busiest period of the entire year for tourism. and. If I had had my act together a little bit better, I would have produced a podcast episode over the winter that I would have just published on April 1st. But unfortunately, that did not happen. And so I, I tried really hard to rush one out in March. And on March 31st, I said, you know what? I feel like it's better to save this for next month and do it well rather than to rush it out and have it not be up to my standards. So sorry about that, Joe. Sorry about that to all the loyal podcast listeners. Uh, on the topic of the podcast, just want to say, um, perhaps you noticed, perhaps you didn't, uh, YouTube now has a new podcast feature. I find it to be a little bit clunky, uh, to be honest with you, but basically what it does is it goes to my podcast feed, and anytime I publish a new episode, it basically just publishes it as a video on YouTube. And so there's now a new way for you to listen to the podcast. Now, of course, it is a video. It is not uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it is an audio only, so even though it's technically a video on YouTube, it's not actually a video. Um, I'm still experimenting with this. I really, I, I re never put um, podcast content on YouTube before because I wasn't quite sure if people, you know, would even listen to it. Uh, but it seems that this is what YouTube wants people to do. And I just, I tend to be a follower. And if this is what they are saying they want, then who am I to not follow their guidance? I'm going to cut through here because I see at the horse stables there is at least one horse out and about today. 
and we don't always get to see horses at the new stables, so when we have the chance, let's take advantage of that. The horse stable is only uh, about a year old, less than a year old, actually. It's where the police horses, the working horses, now live. Much better for them. They used to live, I believe, in Rock Creek Park and had to commute when they came here to the National Mall. The mounted horses, they are used primarily for events. So anytime there's a big event, you'll see the, the horses out and about. Obviously, the National Cherry Blossom Festival Parade was yesterday. That's a big event. Today is the last day officially of the National Cherry Blossom Festival. There are some smaller events. The signature events are all wrapped up. So another Cherry Blossom Festival season for the books. It's always fun, springtime in DC. We had Petal Palooza last Saturday, and I was really, really tempted to do a live stream around the time of the fireworks show. Uh, I decided not to, because I was tired. But if you really want me to try next year, I have no clue if fireworks look well on a live stream, but if you really want me to try, leave a comment, leave a chat, and let me know. And if enough people vote for it, maybe I'll give it a try during Pedal Palooza next year. And Daniel says, greetings from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Greetings to you. Kanisha says, it's a bright and sunny day here in Tampa. I will be up in a couple of days. Excellent. And I visited from Vegas last year in August. Videos made the trip much easier. Happy to hear it. I have been noticing a lot more folks uh, who come on the tours this year uh, mention the podcast compared to years past, which is why I was disappointed in myself that I didn't get to publish a podcast episode this, this month, but I know people are really digging it and that makes me quite happy because I actually like making the podcast more than just about anything else. I've got two horses out here. I'm not familiar enough with the horses to know what their names are, unfortunately. If there's a volunteer here, we can definitely find out, but I don't see one outside. So there's kind of two sides to the stables here. Two of these uh, open pens where the horses can hang out in between shifts. And it appears they are enjoying a, a snack. Well, at least the one over there is. Not quite sure what this one over here is up to. Enjoying a snack, some delicious hay. So this is the other one over here. It's very rare. It's uh, very rare that I've seen both in use at the same time. Very small number of times I have. But if you do want to see the horses in real life, definitely try to come around this time of day. If you come late in the day, they're almost certainly in for the night. I know when I do an evening tour, we usually arrive here around 6 p.m. and I'm not sure I've ever seen a horse out at 6 p.m. So we have 25 people tuned in right now, and if you are tuned in live and you haven't said hello yet, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let me know who you are and where in the world you are tuned in from. I'm heading over to the Lincoln Memorial next because I really want to show you the new ramp, or mega ramp as I've been calling it that they opened up at the Lincoln Memorial. And I want to show you the status of the construction because it is quite substantial at the moment so that everyone knows what to expect when they come. There's usually uh, amateur sports on this field over here. And I guess today, because it's Sunday, not much is happening aside from these two tossing around a football to my right. But I did give a tour last week to a family from another country and they'd never seen kickball before. And I looked it up and kickball is not an international sport, very much an American sport, although in some other countries they have a, a version of it. And I know in Canada they call it soccer baseball. But I always, I always love to meet people from other countries and learn about these small but interesting cultural differences. Okay, we've got 
hard to read that username from Northern California. It is, according to my watch, 72 degrees right now. It's sunny, there's a blue sky, and there's barely a cloud around. I would personally consider 72 degrees to be just about the optimal temperature. Now, unfortunately for me, because I started my tour at 9 a.m., I had to dress in layers, which is one of the things I strongly recommend you do if you visit in the spring or the fall or any of the in-between seasons. But since I had to dress in layers, I still have jeans on and a jacket because they were very much needed when I left my home at 8 a.m., though now shorts and a t-shirt is probably okay. So we will see the Lincoln Memorial. I will take you across Independence Avenue in search of some Kwans and cherry trees. I know they are a little bit past bloom. I've been posting on Instagram about them this week. If you don't follow Trip Hex DC on Instagram, you can check out the video description where I have links to all of the socials. LP is tuning in from Seattle, where it looks like a beautiful day in DC. It sure is a beautiful day here. Is it a beautiful day in Seattle? Or as we call it here, the other Washington. And I'm sure as you call it there, we are the other Washington. The weather this month uh, during the Cherry Blossom Festival has been a bit less than ideal on many of the days, including yesterday. Yesterday, I did the final semi-private tour of the spring, and it was very windy, and it was very cold, and there was no reflection in the reflecting pool, which was a bit of a bummer. But the wind was really whipping the water, and you could not see any reflection. Today, it's much more calm, so I will show you what today's reflection looks like. It is a much better reflection. It's still a tiny bit breezy, so it's not a perfect reflection. But, I mean, come on now. That's pretty solid. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Hey, Sky Blue Jay! Good to see you here, my friend. Jay says it looks beautiful in D.C. today. I fully agree with you. How is it in your part of the world, Jay? And it's 50 degrees in Northern California and semi-cloudy. California is a very tall state. So 50s in the north, probably 70s in the south. Let's go up the stairs and check out the Lincoln Memorial. And I do have an update about the semi-private tour because I have been getting many, many questions about that. So as soon as I depart from the Lincoln Memorial, I will give you an update on that. The Lincoln Memorial, of course, is iconic. If you've seen any movie, any show, looked at any postcard in any gift store, you've seen the Lincoln Memorial, probably both the outside and the statue on the inside. But as you can see, it is under massive construction right now. It's also very busy today, so it's not your eyes. It is very busy here today. Okay, very crowded over here. Probably gonna have some buffering. It always seems to happen just because there's so many people here at once. Sorry about that, bear with me. So, the Lincoln Memorial under major renovation, they are building a brand new museum under the stairs. So essentially, right about there, under the stairs, there will eventually be a brand new museum about the Lincoln Memorial. So it's very meta. We have a museum about the Lincoln Memorial under the memorial. I've seen the computer renderings, the drawings. It looks amazing. I cannot wait. Unfortunately, it will be probably about two years before it is ready to go, before I'll be able to take any of my tour groups in there and before you'll be able to go in there. I know in the meantime, it's a bit unfortunate. We have now this huge structure over here. This is what I'm calling mega ramp. It is probably the biggest ramp I've ever seen before. And it's finally open. 
So I know if you've been here in the last few months, they've been building this thing for seemingly forever. And it's finally open. I used it today for the first time on my tour. Um, it is a very long ramp. It takes a long time to go up. So if you have a stroller, if you need the accessible features, it's wonderful that it's here. Um, if you want to go up and down fast, the stairs is still a much, much, much faster uh, way to go. So uh, I only used it for the first time today. I will be exploring Mega Ramp a little bit more. <laughs> Sky Blue Jay wants to know, will, me will Mega Ramp remain? No, so Jay, once the project is finished, once the museum is open and everything is uh, cleaned up, they will have brand new elevators to take you up to the main chamber, which is badly, badly needed. So Mega Ramp is a temporary situation. And it's worth saying that um, Mega Ramp is better than what we have at the Jefferson Memorial right now, which is also under renovation. And they built a temporary elevator, uh, a temporary lift and it is broken all the time. It was broken this morning, it was broken last weekend. I hate it, I hate that it's broken so often and people who need it uh, have to gamble on whether they go to the Jefferson Memorial and it's open. So even though Mega Ramp is large and it's kind of uh, a view obstruction and it takes a long time to go up and down, it is still, in my opinion, superior to an elevator that has lots of moving parts and is gonna break. So that's Mega Ramp, that's the update. Uh, I will not be going inside because it is way too crowded here today and uh, it's best if I just continue on. But because today is a beautiful day and because it's, weekend, it's the weekend, it's Sunday, this is the most visited spot in all of the city. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be crowded. All right, let's see. The LP says, I was just about to say it doesn't look too busy, now I see the lines. Yo, it's busy, trust me, it's busy here today. And Stadium Dogs wants to know, best hot dog in DC is at Ben's Chili Bowl. Um, well, I don't really, I'm not much of a hot dog connoisseur, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't really seek them out. I feel like Ben's Chili Bowl is definitely a pretty famous hot dog. I don't really know of any others. I saw a statistic recently, and I haven't verified it yet, so if anyone wants to vet this, that there are more hot dogs sold at Major League Baseball games than just about anywhere else. I feel like a hot dog is very much a, hey, I'm at the ball game, I want to have a hot dog kind of food. Here's what it looks like from the side. Big fences. Yeah, it, the, the Lincoln Memorial is going to look like this for the next two years. I know it's kind of kind of unfortunate if your trip is in the next two years. So far on my tours, I've offered, I've said, if anyone would like me to Photoshop them into an old photo of the Lincoln Memorial before construction, I can do that. But no one has taken me up on that yet. It's all part of your experience. It's all part of your story. If you come during a construction or renovation, well, it's too bad, but it's part of the story. LP says, are the red bikes rentals, are they electric? So Capital Bike Share, I have a few different videos about Capital Bike Share and how to use it. It is my preferred way of getting around. There are different um, rental, rental systems here. We have some Lime bikes up here on the left. Uh, or Lime scooters and bikes, I should say. Uh, Capital Bike Share are the red ones. They are the bikes that you have to take out and return to the docks. The red ones are human powered, pedal powered. I believe Capital Bike Share calls them classic bikes. And then the black ones and the gray ones are e bikes. The red ones, the human powered bikes, the classic bikes, you can ride for up to 30 minutes. And if you have a, if you buy a single ride, you can ride up to 30 minutes for no extra charge. On an e-bike, there is a per minute charge. I think that they're worth it, uh, depending on the context. If you're just poking around on the National Mall, I think a human powered bike is perfectly fine. You're not going up any big hills. You're not doing anything too strenuous. But if you need to go like way across town or you need to go up a big hill, the e-bikes can definitely be pretty handy for that. Stadium Dogs says, seems about right. I think in reference to my question about most hot dogs being sold at baseball games. And what is the newest Smithsonian Museum? That would be the African American History and Culture Museum. An excellent museum if you get a chance to go. 
And Sky Blue Jay, thank you for the reminder, my friend. Don't forget to like the video. Yes, it shows how much you all appreciate this. So I know sometimes people who make these videos, they will say, oh, make sure to like the video. It helps with the algorithm. I actually think that's a bunch of hooey. I don't think it does anything for the quote unquote, the algorithm. But what it does do is it shows me that you liked watching. I often uh, struggle with whether or not I should do these. And like I said, just one week ago, I chose not to do one because I was tired. But if people are really into it and want me to do one next year, I'll try to make sure I plan ahead so that I can deliver a live stream on the day of Petalpalooza. So yes, thank you to Sky Blue Jay for the reminder. All right, can't decide. Which way should I go, left or right? Decisions, decisions. I'm gonna go right. My tour route is to the left. I'm gonna go right. I wanna walk near the Potomac River. On a beautiful sunny day, walking near the water can be quite pleasant. So yesterday was the National Cherry Blossom Parade. I missed it this year. I did live stream it two years ago and people really enjoyed that one, that live stream, especially people who had family members in the marching bands who are in the parade. I think that live stream was my all time record for most concurrent views. There was quite a lot of people tuned in. So quick update as I move towards the Potomac River about the semi-private tour. Let me give you guys an update on this as prompt. So the semi-private tour, if you go on the TripXDC website, you will see is still up there, uh, even though there are no more that are available for booking. So the semi-private tour was a bit of an experiment, what I call the pilot that I ran this spring. And the idea was, I've tried these versions of public tours in the past. Obviously, I have the monumental trivia tour led by wonderful tour guide Christine. And that is an example of a public tour, which is one of these where you buy a ticket for every person in the group who's attending, and that's how you go. And I've tried different versions of this over the years, and they've always, I've always struggled with them. I get these situations where I get one person signed up, two people signed up, and I really, it's not economically viable if I don't have a group of at least six people on the tour, right? So the semi-private tour was meant to be a test, and it was meant to be a test specifically during uh, spring break, because that is a very uh, busy time of year in DC. And I figured if I can't make it work during spring break, then it's not gonna work. But I would say for the most part, it is successful. It was successful. So what does that mean? What does successful mean? Well, it was on the calendar for four dates, four Saturdays, two in March, two in April. There were 10 total tickets available for each one. So 40 total tickets. I said, if I sell 24 tickets, I will consider, a, consider it a success. If I sell fewer than 24, I will consider it a failure. And so at the end, I sold 35, 35 total. And I would consider that to be a success. So what does that mean? Well, it means maybe, just maybe, I will continue running these in the summer. I haven't fully decided yet. Haven't decided if I want to keep it going or whether I want to stick with the private tours. So that's why it's still on the website. But my decision is still, I'm still working on it. I go back and forth every day. I say, well, obviously it was a success. I should keep it going. But then I doubt myself and I say, yes, but it was spring break. So many people were here. And then I go back and forth. So if you have any opinions on this, go ahead and weigh in. If you attended any of those semi-private tours, make sure to weigh in. Robert asks, do I think the circulator buses get shut down? Don't know what that means. If you could clarify what you mean here. And how far is the Potomac River from my current location? Unfortunately, 
I forgot about this project over here. So the Potomac River is right on the other side of this ugly fence. But unfortunately, we can't see it because I forgot that this was here. So my apologies. <laughs> I forgot about this thing. I should have gone left at that intersection. I should have gone left. Would have been better. Okay, let's see. Lovesco says, I want to go back to DC again. Watched my video before we went and it was very helpful. Happy to hear it. And Sky Blue Jay says, great success. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jay. Jay has been on a private tour with me. So my private tour, that is the bread and butter of Tripex DC. I have been doing private tours all the way since the beginning. Those have always sold. That has always been successful. And so where I go back and forth on this is, do I stick with what I know works? Or do I try something that's maybe a little bit of a gamble? So if, if I continue the semi-private tour in the summer, it will be probably only in June and July. Basically, I need to be strategic about it. Here's the Potomac River, by the way. I need to be strategic about it so that it runs during the busy times of the year when I am more confident that I can sell the tickets. I really want it to be successful because I know many people, a private tour is, is a splurge. I am very well aware of the price of the tour and the um, fact that it is a splurge for many people. I just took my own little trip last year and I took a lot of tours, but they were not all private tours because I, I know it is a splurge. So very well aware of that. So still, still deciding. I know that's very unsatisfying. People want to know, is it happening? Is it not happening? What's going on with the semi-private tour? That's my update. Appreciate everyone letting me talk that through. And if you have opinions, just let me know. Feedback is helpful. Okay, Stadium Dogs says, do I think spring break is less representative sample given the large group family sizes. Yeah, I think the semi-private tours would be best for couples. That's gener that generally seems to be who signed up for it, solos and couples. And it's true, once you have a family of four, the private tour, just cost-wise, seems pretty competitive. That's the trick of it. Of course, one might say that means that the pr price of the private tour is too low. Pricing is very, very challenging. I feel like I've got a formula so far that works well enough. But obviously there are always ways to tweak. All right, Robert Albright says, there was some news reports that the circulator bus will perhaps get shut down due to city budgeting. Let me get across the street before I finish this question. Just wondering if you heard anything about that. Well, yes I have. <laughs> so, if you don't follow local politics, this can all be extremely confusing. Out of curiosity, does anyone remember a year ago when Metrobus was going to be completely free? There were many a video made on this topic. Washington DC is the first city to make their bus system completely free. Well, guess what? It never happened because a lot of times the articles are way too early. There's a proposal and the legislative process, the political process, it works through, things get changed, things get amended it doesn't work out the way that the original article was written. That example with the Metro bus is a perfect example of that. Now with the budget, the way that this process works is the mayor creates a budget. This budget gives money to some things, takes it away from others, and then the mayor sends it to the city council and it's theirs to deal with. So in the mayor's budget, there is a cut to the circulator bus. Makes me upset, very frustrating, but it's in there. It was also in there last year. That cut never happened. The city council took it out. 
So you have to understand that these headlines, you have to read below the headline, you have to read the actual article to understand what's going on. And in many cases, the headline is just what's been proposed, not what's actually happening. I know a lot of people get really by that, but that is what is happening with this. So we will look at the Kwanzins now. So the Kwanzins are one of the varieties of cherry blossoms. This is one of the late bloomers. Uh, they are a bit past peak. And how do I know that? Because you have the blossoms, but you also have a lot of green leaves already coming through. So look up close, you'll see. Yes, we have the blossom still in uh, all of its glory. Big gust of wind at the exact wrong time for me to show you this, right? But you have the blossom and then you have the green leaves poking through. Now in a week's time, it will just be green leaves. Most people will have no idea that these are cherry blossoms at all. But for now, you have a little bit of both. So you have the cherry blossoms and you have the leaves. Now these look very different from the Yoshinos. The Yoshino cherry trees are the famous ones. If you watch my, either my cherry blossom walk or my cherry blossom bike ride this year, you might have seen that all of the blossoms are white because those are, those are the Yoshinos, the famous ones that people come down to the Tidal Basin for. This year, the Yoshinos hit peak bloom on March 17th, an extremely early peak bloom date. These are the Kwanzins. These are approximately two weeks behind that schedule. So once the Yoshinos hit peak bloom, wait approximately two weeks, you get the Kwanzins in peak bloom. I'm not gonna lie, the Kwanzins are pretty spectacular. They might not be as famous, but they're good. They're nice. They're these big, huge, puffy, double blossoms. Not quite sure how well you can tell from this, but uh, what's interesting to me is the official color of the National Cherry Blossom Festival is pink, even though the Yoshinos are white. So a lot of people can be surprised when they get here during a Yoshino peak bloom and they say, wow, I was expecting a lot more pink and I got a lot of white. All right, let's see, got a lot of comments here. So, Ock Brown says, learned a lot about DC from the videos. It's one of my favorite places. Uh, what, who named Stumpy? That's an excellent question, who named Stumpy? I actually don't know who named Stumpy, I feel like because I'm a tour guide, tour guides will probably take credit for naming Stumpy. Tour guides have known about Stumpy for a lot longer than Stumpy's been famous for. Um, and even if you watch some of my older live walks around the Tidal Basin, I think 2021 I have Stumpy in there. So I think tour guides would probably take credit for him, but I actually have no idea who uh, named Stumpy. So these are some of the Kwanzins, but since we're talking about, talking about Stumpy, since people want to know about Stumpy, should I, go, should I go to Stumpy? Should we take a walk to Stumpy? I was going to end it over here, but there's 60 people tuned in. If you want me to go to Stumpy, vote now. How can I deny people what they want? Jay has posted a Washingtonian article about Stumpy. Thank you, Jay. If you don't want to click the link, Oh yes, after the, after the live walk, of course. Hey, Mark Finley, good to see you, my friend. Mark wants to come at this time of year. Yeah, it's a good time of year, although I have to say, to be completely transparent with everyone, um, this cherry blossom season has been kind of weird weather-wise. We had super warm days in early March. That's why peak bloom was so early. So we had these 70 degree days in early slash mid-March. Then we hit peak bloom. Then it got super cold. There was a lot of rain. It was very wet. The second semi-private tour that I did, we did in the pouring rain, which was not ideal, but everyone was a good sport. And the benefit was we got to see peak bloom with basically no crowds. And I think in the moment, no one really quite understood how significant that was. And then if they came back the next day and they saw what the crowds looked like the next day, they were like, oh, that's what that was. So we had a super early peak bloom, March 17th, then it got cold. Now this is kind of a blessing and a curse. But because it was cold, the cherry blossoms actually hung on for a lot longer than they usually do. So typically I say, you can expect about one week of blossoms after peak bloom. 
So if blossoms hit on a Saturday, the following, by the following Saturday, that's probably about going to be the end of it. Well, this year, peak bloom, I think March 17th was a Sunday. And then they lasted for almost two weeks after that. So there was essentially three weekends when you could come out here and see peak bloom. And that is just extremely rare. That is very rare. Okay. A lot of votes for Stumpy, so we're going to Stumpy. Thank you all for voting. And Bat Dog says, I was there the week after Peak Bloom when it was super cold and rainy, but I had a lot of space to myself on the tidal basin. And that is the correct attitude to have. Sure, it was rainy. Yes, we got wet. But man, to be able to see a Peak Bloom without the hordes of tourists is something special, even if it's wet. That was actually one of the tips I gave in my Tidal Basin Tips video, if anyone remembers that one. I think from one year ago, one of the tips I gave was go on a rainy day. People are very predictable. Tourists are very predictable. When it rains, people do inside activities. When the weather's perfect like today, people do outdoor activities. And that's fine, that's perfectly fine. And in fact, we can use that predictability to our advantage because it means if you come on a rainy day, on a wet day, you can kind of have these places to yourself, even during the spring. And Bat Dog also says, the kite festival was awesome. I'm glad to hear that. So I did a, a quick spin around the kite festival this year. I recorded it as a video, not as a live stream, but as a video because last, time I, last year I tried to live stream it and it was a disaster. It was nothing but buffering. So this year it was a video. And I was very interested because some of the comments were from people who said, wow, I went and it was fantastic, had a great time. Other comments said it was so crowded I couldn't enjoy myself. And I think both are, both are true, both are valid. Um, it's always gonna be crowded at that festival, it, it just is. It's a free festival, it's a fun time, it's a celebration of spring. People are gonna go, it's just kinda how it is. Um, so if your expectation is that you're going to be flying a kite and no one else is going to be there, I'm sorry to tell you, but that's just not going to happen. But on the other hand, when things are, when places are crowded, they are less enjoyable. That's just objectively true. So it kind of cuts both ways. But if you are curious about what this year's kite festival looked like, go into the video archives or maybe one of my trusty moderators can post a link. I think Jay is on, has uh, moderator privileges. And Stadium Dogs says, do I know if that $5 Nationals ticket hack still works? So basically, no, uh, they do still have $5 tickets. They are limited only to DC residents this year. That said, I have not heard any reports on whether anyone has tr tried to test this yet and shown up and if they require you to show ID or if they just give you the tickets anyway. I have no reports on that. I personally don't do the $5 tickets because, to be frank, the $5 ticket is kind of a crummy seat and it's basically just buying a standing room only ticket anyway. And maybe when I was younger and much broker, I would have done the $5 ticket, but I usually spring for a decent seat now when I go to a, to a game, any of the games. And speaking of which, baseball or other sports fans that is going to be the topic of the upcoming trip hacks dc podcast it is going to be everything you need to know about attending live sports in dc i think it is um, an important topic because people ask me sometimes about sports and i've tried to do some videos and they never never seem to get any views um, and that's okay but i feel like the podcast is a much better way to get that information out to you and so the upcoming episode will be all about attending live sports live sport um, not just baseball but all of them so keep an eye out for that and hey michael shade good to see you here my friend was in annapolis yesterday beautiful there too went for the 40th annapolis cup croquet match naval academy versus st john's college Speaking of live sports, I don't think I have ever seen a croquet match. That sounds pretty cool, though. Annapolis is one of the 
good day trips from DC. And speaking of podcast shows, I'm, everybody's just queuing me up, just uh, teeing me up perfectly to say after the live sports episode, the next episode after that will probably be about day trips, uh, both day trips that I think are worth taking and day trips that I think are worth skipping. Um, I think people can sometimes fall into a bit of a trap where when they travel to a new place, especially if they've traveled a long distance, the trap is they say, well, I've come all this way. I might as well go to this place and this place and this place and this place. And they're all so close. It's just a short train ride away. And before you know it, you've spent all your time riding trains and going to these outskirt destinations and you've barely even seen any of DC. So we will talk all about that in great depth in an upcoming episode. And let's see, Osero says, hi, I'm coming to Washington, D.C. on the 23rd of May from Croatia. I will be working on a work and travel program for three months. Excellent. I have been watching all of the vids. They're helpful. Do I have any tips for me? I think I will explore everything possible. So, no. <laughs> I mean, I have over 250 videos. All of them have tips. So... I really, unless you have a very specific question, no, I don't have any specific tips for any particular person. Check out those videos, and if you have a specific question, you can leave it as a comment. And I am really trying to hope to revive the Q&A series, which I know I started and I stopped and I started and I stopped, and um, I really wanna get that going again because I feel like that is a good use of the YouTube shorts, is for your questions and answers. And Neil says, thank you for the incredible videos. Well, thank you for the kind words. And uh, George, hey, late to the game, but says thanks again for the great tour. So just gave a tour to George and his family. My second timers tour, which is unadvertised. If you have been on a private tour with me before, or I suppose even now the semi-private tour, and you wanna do something different, I have an unadvertised second timers tour I've done it a small number of times, but I think it's pretty good. And Sky Blue Jay is recommending the private tour. You won't regret it, I hope not. I hope I haven't had anyone regretting it. So no flooding today. We are not at high tide right now. During a high tide, this entire area would be underwater. That is why they're doing the seawall project, and that is why Stumpy has to go goodbye. I'm slowly but surely working my way to Stumpy. Don't worry, I'm on my way. And George says the second timers tour was totally worth it and wonderful. Thank you for the review. I had a feeling you felt that way. It was fantastic seeing your family again. And Mark says, did I tell you I took the Metro from Springfield to Dulles? It took forever. I was thankful it was available. So that is an excellent point. Just because the Metro now goes to Dulles does not mean that Dulles is any closer than it's ever been. It's still very, very far away. And I am of two minds on this. My first is I used to personally, when I was traveling, never go to Dulles unless it was the only option or the only decent option, which was for international travel sometimes, but for domestic travel almost never. Now that Metro is open, I actually find myself considering it, even for a domestic trip, because I know I can get the Metro out there. Now that said, it's still really far to go from my home to Dulles, including transfers and walking to the station and all that, probably looking at an hour and a half. That is a lot farther and a lot longer of a ride than going to National Airport. So depending on the circumstances, so for example, if my choices are, I can take a nonstop flight from Dulles to London, which is where I'm visiting, 
hypothetically, I would take that every day of the week over a flight from National to London that has a connection in JFK. No doubt about it. Easy choice. But if my choices are a nonstop flight from National to Chicago or a nonstop flight from Dulles to Chicago, I'm taking the National flight every day of the week. Way more convenient. So it all depends on the circumstances. And of course, there's more variables than just that. There's the price as well. Like, what would I do if there was a, if the flight from Dulles to London was $2,000, but the flight with the connection in JFK was only $500? Well, that changes the calculation again. That's why I'm a bit skeptical of all these AI travel tools where they say, oh, all you need to do is just tell us where you're going and we take care of all of it for you. Because there's so many variables that you need to look at. As a human, you need to look at and consider and decide. Okay, let's see. Osero says, how's the weather from May to September? It's hot. I have uh, several videos, the month by month. You can watch those. I also have uh, what to pack, what to wear. All of those cover weather in one way or another. And I have an entire podcast episode. This is one of the earlier ones all about the weather with an interview with an actual meteorologist, one of the best meteorologists, in my opinion, in all of Washington, D.C. Mark Finley says, I got a 99 each way deal from United. I'll put up with Dulles for that. Yeah, so the price is, price is important. Though I do feel as a, as a traveler, not just as a travel tips giver, as a traveler, as my time becomes more valuable and more stretched thin, it's like the price of the flight becomes less important and the how many hours do I have to spend in airports becomes much more important. When I was younger, it was kind of the flip, flipped around, but now that is the top consideration. We have Stumpy coming up soon. Stumpy up here on the left. Nobody's stopping for Stumpy. It's sad, once Stumpy stopped blooming, everybody lost interest in Stumpy. So here he is, straight ahead. Here's Stumpy. Here's the uh, little sign that the National Park Service put up here. So it's, it's explaining, the sign is explaining the seawall project, why we are doing it, why it's needed. And I will say it's not just needed, it is a complete emergency situation here. And they even have a little photo of Stumpy there at the bottom. So uh, you can scan that QR code or go to the National Park Service official website for more information. But here he is, here's Stumpy. Um, Stumpy is past peak bloom. The week of peak bloom, everybody was coming to see Stumpy. The racing presidents, the Nationals mascot, came to see Stumpy. Stumpy actually became a mascot himself and was uh, the mascot for the Cherry Blossom 10-mile race, which was last weekend, and participated in the Nationals president's race during fourth inning, I think last Saturday. And so if you are very curious, uh, Stumpy participated and got revenge on George Washington during the race. So go look on Twitter or Facebook for that. It is a very comical uh, situation that happened there. So that's Stumpy. Goodbye, Stumpy. This will be the last year. The Seawall Project should be starting soon. I don't know exactly when. I don't have an exact date. Uh, I have no inside information. Sky Blue J says, Metro is a godsend for international travelers. I agree. I think Dulles is very useful for international travel. Um, I have used it primarily for international travel because being able to fly nonstop from D.C. to many destinations in Europe, there are nonstop flights to Japan, to Dubai. It's very convenient. I'm not going to deny that. So for domestic travel, if you're primarily a domestic traveler, I understand it's not that appealing, but for international travel, it is quite, uh, quite useful. And let's see, Piano Boy says, yo. Let me get around here. It says, yo. The channel was fantastic for when I stayed last year for two weeks. Happy to hear it. Two weeks is a solid trip, solid trip. And Sky Blue J again says, having to get a bus from Dulles to a metro stop and then wait for the metro was a pain. It was a pain, that's why I almost never did it. 
and now you can go almost all the way without having to change. It is what we call, or what they call in public transit planning, a one-seat ride. You get on, you've got your seat for the entire ride. And as many uh, one-seat rides as you can provide, the better. And Elvaro says, thank you for allowing us to see these incredible images. Well, you're welcome. And Bat Dog says, I love that people were leaving gifts like the bottle of bourbon. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that. So there are rules for, you know, park rangers. They, they have a weird and in many ways challenging job, right? Because people leave this stuff and obviously if it's trash, if it's litter, they can throw it out. If it's like a bottle of bourbon, is that trash? Is it litter? I don't think they can take it home. They're definitely not allowed to take money, even if it's, you know, on the ground. So I have no clue what happened to any of that stuff. But I don't know. If I had a bottle of something, I would probably just keep it for myself. Uh, there are, so at the Jefferson Memorial here, Thomas Jefferson's birthday was yesterday. And between the time I gave the tour in the morning and between the time I gave the tour this morning, someone delivered a substantial amount of flowers to the memorial for Jefferson's birthday. I don't know who, I know why, but I don't know, I feel like maybe you're a big flower connoisseur, but there are a lot of people I would rather send flowers to than someone who hasn't been around in a long time, but that's just me. Obviously for some someone it was very important. So I think I'm going to wrap up over here. It's been nearly an hour. Actually, I think I will go a little bit farther because there is one more batch of Kwanzans that I know of on the other side of the Jefferson Memorial. And I feel like I put a bunch of Kwanzans in the thumbnail and I got to live up to that promise. So we will go find that. So every time I see these big groups of bikes these bring back memories because this was me this was me for a long time if you've been following listening watching you know I started my tour guiding career as a bike tour guide and we would often have these huge groups these are like huge groups right um, and the reason I never loved it is because I could never go in to any of the monuments with the group because the tour guide has to babysit all the bikes and so I remember one year, someone in my group said, it, it must be so wonderful and exciting that you get to see the Lincoln Memorial every day. And aside from the fact that I didn't give the tour every day, I thought, I haven't seen the inside of the Lincoln Memorial even once this whole year. And that's when I was inspired to, when I started Trip Hex DC, say, no bikes, no vehicles, just good old fashioned leg power. And that way, I can actually go into these monuments with everyone. Okay, so, Piano Boy wants to know, when is the renovations for the Jefferson Memorial estimated to be completed? I actually don't know. This is a bit frustrating, I think. Um, so I know that my friends from the Inclusive Traveler, who are guests on the podcast episode about accessibility came to DC uh, recently and no noticed that, man, shouldn't this have wrapped up by now? You know, this has been under renovation for so long. It's still a huge mess over here. And like, I never see construction workers here. Like I never know when they're actually here working on it. I really, I just don't know. It is frustrating though. It seems to be taking a really long time. And I don't know why. I don't know if there was because there was a snag that happened or it's hard to know from the outside looking in what's going on, but unfortunately, I do not, do not have an answer to that question. Okay, trying to find my spot in the stream. So, Sublime says, thank you for the stream. The blossoms were very nice to see. Well, thank you for tuning in. There are just a few more Kwanzans up here I wanna stop by. Today's the last day, the final day of the National Cherry Blossom Festival. Well, what that means practically is that after today, there won't be any more events as part of the festival. 
as far as I know, all the events this year went off pretty much without a hitch. The parade happened yesterday, although I should, I didn't actually check and verify. I know it was so windy yesterday, I don't know if all the balloons were able to get up in the air. On a windy day, sometimes those big inflatable balloons can't all fly. Uh, Sky Blue J, thank you for the thank you for the super chat. Four ninety nine pounds. I feel like that's a lot in dollars. Um, thank you for that. Treat myself to a cold beverage. Oh, I've I've been craving an iced coffee for a while now. Definitely got that on the mind. And let's see, Ak Brown says, I know the channel focuses on trips to DC, but each trip I fall more in love with the area and I'm interested in moving there. Do I have any videos or recommendations? So I have three videos. There was a three part series, my moving to DC series. And I have one podcast episode. So I have four resources total, three videos, one podcast. And that is all I'm going to do. I will not be doing any more. Um, because I, I tried a lot of things during COVID. There was a lot of let's throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And that, that stuff did not stick. But what I realized was um, tourist content is what I do. It's what people tune in for. And that's perfectly fine with me. There are many people, especially now, like a lot of realtors, a lot of real estate agents doing moving to DC content. And I am perfectly happy to let them have that realm. Um, but if you want to know what I think about it, watch those three videos, listen to that one podcast. I feel like there's a lot of good info in there, but if you want even more, uh, unfortunately, that is what I am going to have for you. Okay, this little spot over here, almost no one ever comes over here except for the one or two weeks when the Kwanzins are in bloom and they're already blowing off. Look at that. Not sure how much you can tell. There are quite a few already on the floor. So this is pretty much it. After this weekend, I think you're not gonna have much longer. And even these, so these are definitely past peak. You can see all the green leaves poking through. So probably in one week's time, all the leaves on these trees will be completely green and the blossoms will all be fallen. And Mark Finley says, is that the same renovation that was going on when we were there in 2019? So no, that was a roof, <laughs> that was a roof repair. It's just confusing because they did these two projects back to back. So right as soon as they finished the roof repair, they started this current project, which is basically rebuilding the underneath area. And so if you're not super into it, not paying very close attention like I do, it looks like one really long ongoing project when in reality it was two back-to-back -back projects as soon as the first one finished the second one started but it is frustrating because it just has felt like the jefferson memorial has been re under renovation for forever but i mean these are these are so nice i know the kwanzins are not famous they make up about i think 13 percent of the total cherry trees in dc so not nearly the number that you get with the Yoshinos, but they're so nice. And with that, we are nearly at one hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping it up. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for coming and seeing some blossoms with me today and enjoying a beautiful spring day, even after giving a three hour tour, walking around another few miles on a beautiful day like today. I'll never, I'll never complain about that. So thank everyone for tuning in. If you want to watch any previous live streams, they are all available on the YouTube channel. If you are curious about the podcast, you can find that over at triphexdc.com slash podcast, or hopefully soon, you'll also be able to find it on this YouTube channel. But for now, finding it on the website is the easiest way to do that. And if you have any opinions about the semi-private tour, and whether I should run it this summer. Leave it as a comment, leave it as a chat, let me know because I am still deciding. Uh, the tour calendar for June, July, and August is not yet available on the website. I am hoping it will be available soon. And I do not have a more specific answer than soon because there are still some details I need to work out before I post that and let people start making bookings. So hopefully soon uh, it will be ready. But in the meantime, 
please be patient and bear with me. And if you want to go on my interest list, you can send a message through the website, tripxdc.com. Tell me when you're coming, your dates, and I will add you to the interest list. And then as soon as those tours are open for booking, I will tell you so that you can have first dibs on one of those tours. And let me just make sure I didn't miss any final chats. Uh, Jens says, greetings from Germany. Thank you for tuning in. And Neil says, excellent comment. Well, thank you, Neil. And thank you all for tuning in. And as I say at the end of all of these, enjoy your trip.